This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. Growing up, I think it would be fair to say that I could have been labeled a door slammer. That was my way of dealing with my anger. I mean, whenever something would go wrong, whenever things weren't going my way, whenever my parents said, go to your room, you can bet that I would grab a hold of that brass doorknob and just wing it to the door jam, creating a thundering boom that echoed down the hall of my childhood home. Now, my mom once suggested that maybe I should try something a little less disruptive, like punching my pillow. Now, I can't be for certain, but I'm pretty sure that after hearing that suggestion from my mom, I probably opened up my bedroom door right back up and slammed it even harder to let her know what I thought about that idea. Slamming doors never resolved any of my anger issues, but I will say that it got my point across to my family that I was not happy at all. We all have different ways of expressing our anger and our frustrations, and we need to do it in constructive ways in order to release this natural human emotion. Our gospel reading for today demonstrates that even Jesus wasn't immune to feeling anger and sadness for his people. Now, our setting is the temple in Jerusalem during the Passover celebration. While all four gospel writers include this story within their works, only John places it at the beginning of Jesus' ministry as opposed to at the beginning of the Holy Week, right before Jesus marches onto the cross. As Jesus enters the temple, he sees the people selling cattle and sheep and doves that are going to be used for sacrifices. He sees tables of money changers swapping this currency for that one since there are many out-of-town guests present for the festival. Now, to the ordinary eyes of the day, this was just a common scene. It was required that every Jewish male that lived within 15 miles of the city, they must attend. And for those that moved out into the countryside, well, they continued to keep this tradition of coming to Jerusalem because it was tradition. It was an integral part of their faith, their history, and their ancestry. It was estimated that over 2 million Jews were known to descend upon Jerusalem in order to keep the Passover. To these people, this ritual of sacrificing at the temple and the process that they had to go through, it was perfectly normal and expected. However, Jesus sees things in a different light. While it's also part of his faith and his history and his ancestry as a Jewish male, he also sees it as being irresponsible and, quite frankly, irrelevant. For one, the people selling the livestock and changing the money, they aren't exactly being honest with the visitors. They see this as an economic opportunity to cash in on a requirement that has been established for the people. I can see a bit of collusion going on here as vendors are setting prices in order to line their pockets. I mean, the people are going to pay. They have to pay, even if the price of the goods is jacked up so sky high. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, this type of dishonesty, it doesn't sit well with Jesus. He isn't happy at all. But even more so, Jesus does not like to see a roadblock between us and God. The God that created us and cares for us and comforts us should be accessible to all people who turn to him in belief. People should not be shut out because they just don't have enough money to buy the animal or to change their money or to pay the temple tax. All of these factors wrapped together are just plain irresponsible. And it's this irresponsibility which stirs Jesus' passion for the people within his heart. Jesus upends the tables of the money changers. He makes a whip of cords and he drives out those animals as he exclaims, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. I would bet that Jesus might have even slammed a door if there was one available. He isn't happy with this dishonest behavior and he's letting everyone know. But beyond the anger and us catching a glimpse of the human side of Jesus, we witness an even larger message. Jesus isn't being disruptive just so he can stand up for the lowly and the weak and the poor, though that's a very important thing to do. No, on an even grander scale, Jesus points past simple human rights in order to send the message that he intends to upend the people's entire way of relating to God. After Jesus' outburst, the temple authorities ask him, Hey, what do you think you're doing here? Jesus responds, 
destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I can picture the authorities saying, well, you're quite the carpenter, but there is no way you can rebuild a temple in three days, especially when this one has been under construction for 46 years. Good luck with that one, buddy. Well, clearly Jesus is referring to the temple not as a building, but his body. And we know this because we know the whole story. We know that the death and the resurrection are in store for Jesus. But for the people at that time in that place, I'm sure that they thought he was a little bit bananas, which plays right into his entire outburst of anger. For the anger is just a small component of this whole scene. While Jesus is fighting for justice and reverent worship, He's also saying that the way the people are conducting business, it's no longer needed. Jesus has come in order to put an end to sacrifices of any kind, for he will be the ultimate and final sacrifice in order to pay for the sins of the people. He's come in order to bridge that gap between humanity and God. Jesus does the work for us. There's absolutely no work required on our part. All we have to do is turn to God with a repentant heart and believe. Jesus upends the temple so that he makes a lasting impression on the people, so that they vividly remember this extreme event and that they never forget. For they will recall in three years later when he's crucified in front of their very eyes and when they discover an empty tomb. Anything less than an out-of-character outburst, well, that might have faded from their memory banks of these disciples and they would have forgotten the meaning behind this whole message. Jesus' anger is used as a foreshadowing of what is to come, that he is the Messiah who upends our natural tendencies and traditions in order to further develop the relationship that we have with God. He endures that all, he, all the been, roadblocks have been eliminated and that we are not shut out, that we do have complete access to our God and to his love that is unconditional and without end. For it is Jesus and only Jesus who does this for us as he unselfishly and helplessly hangs on the cross on our behalf. This is an upending moment for all Christian believers. No longer is sacrifice needed. Our victory comes through the saving moment of the cross as Jesus slams the door on death, sin, and the power of the devil once and for all. Praise be to God for doors that slam. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone. Tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? We'll see y'all next week. Later.